Cause honestly, I think when when I heard first first heard the um, Drake album, I was like a little, a, little, a little thrown off at first. But you know, I'm like, you know what, like it's a vibe. You know, I'm not I'm not strictly on one straight genre. I could really do everything. I could dance too. Yeah. You know, so it was cool. It was cool. How you feel about that? I feel like he's smart because he's trying to get like the global. He's mm -hmm. trying to get everybody. And the national. You know what I mean? Yeah, like. He could go to Ibiza and play this shit, and they just gonna, him be rocking to that shit. Ibiza, Soho, we could go, the whole world. At that point. Like when that, your pussy is calling my. I felt that. I, I felt that. On his next project, I know I got like the beats for him. You got beat for Drake. Bro, I know it. Drizzy, OVO, Six Guy. Take Care 2.0. Uh. Soulful shit. You know what I mean? I think. I, That's all I'm saying. I think you, I'm not sure if it was that beat. I think you played a different one. Maybe it was better last time I heard it. Better than that? Yeah, I, I, I believe okay. so. Let's see, let's see. Maybe, maybe. Good start, good start. Good Wait till start. the drop, bro. Wait till the drop, bro. Come on. Wait for the drop. Wait for the drop, bro. Uh huh. Let's start with that for me. You yeah. think it should like went trap? Yeah, I, like, I, I feel like me making, you know, when I make beats, you know, I'm, I'm able to. You make beats? Do I? You never, you never heard of Andy Bucks on the beat? That's me. I know you heard me a couple of times. Come I on, know. man. I know Andy from like the interviews and shit. Oh. I don't know Andy from like the beats. Yeah, listen, Andy does it all. Hey, you know, I'll play a beat for you, but. Yeah, play something. Play something. Exclusive. I got a couple of artists already waiting for these, but I'll play okay. for you. You know, you're my man. I'll play for you real quick. Yeah, Yo, you a hustler, bro. Don't tell nobody about this, though. All right, all right. Nobody. Let me, I got, I got, this is Joby. I got every kind of beat, yeah, though. Yeah, no, I see it, I see it, I see This it. is... Wait, you want to get like 6 9 6 9 you think you're six, Listen. K-Flop? They go, all, Dougie B want to get on this already. Mm. K-Flop manager already hit me up about this beat. Okay. Um, Drake, all, though? Drake? Listen, Drake, I can see Drake on this, too. Drake, throw a couple little... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Okay. Drizzy. I know, I, know, I, know, I know you see my vision, now. I, see it. I know you see the I vision see, like, clearly. Sure like it's it. overall, it's giving you know that London vibes, you know Toronto a little bit. I've been there before. It gives that vibe a little bit. Where's the soul, my man? See? Where's the soul, baby? What up, y'all? It's your boy Andy Bucks with Embrace the Streets shooting the sixth episode of Embrace the Streets. Today we got one of the hottest producers from the boogie down the Bronx. Devin the man, he's working with everybody. TikTok, Instagram, viral, creative, creative, detail, crazy. Devin, come on, man. Yes, sir. Devin, come on the show, man. How you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Take from the boogie down to, to Queens, man. Yeah, yeah. Not, not too far. Not too far, not too far. My oh, boy, I'm in the hammock over here. Sheesh. Shout out to the team, New York Touch. Boy, you was the first. Appreciate it, bro. You, you can't, you can't go wrong with the brown water. So. Oof. I'm not ready to drink it, too. That's the thing. I'm more like a smoker, you know? I, like I feel to, you, I feel you. I don't know, but fuck it, cheers. Yeah, but cheers, though. Salud. Right. <sighs> Get smoother and smoother every time, like a demon. So, <laughs> <laughs> my first question is always <coughs> so, who is Devin Abiza? Devin Abiza, young producer, up and coming producer from the Bronx, DJ, and yeah, that's just me, bro, Devin Abiza. Creative as hell. Creative, yeah. Creative. Um, yeah, been DJ since a young, yeah. young, early age. Uh, you know, just trying to be the best. That's it. That's it. That's it. Top of the top. And I know, like, so you think Ibiza is like your last name? Like, like my man's always talking like, yo, I'm trying to plan a trip to Ibiza. Mm. I said, nigga, where the fuck is that? It's somewhere in Spain. So like, yeah. Like, I just, so you said Ibiza. I'm like, hold on. Like, I thought that like, like a nickname was that your actual real name. Like, nah, my last name is Perez, but okay, okay. Uh, my middle name is Devin. And uh, a family friend kind of gave me the name Ibiza because okay. at the time I was like, when I started DJing, I was like 13. Okay. And um, I was like really into like EDM music, Copy. like Calvin Harris and Avicii shit, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, so he was like, yo, you should be like Devin Ibiza. They got crazy parties in Ibiza. Like, summertime is like, By the beach, it's really popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, so 
and it kind of just it sounded cool. They have an Ibiza, and it just kind of stuck. It just stuck with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We weren't going to change it. You know? I said, so, 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 so now with Devin Beasley and I said we're not going nowhere else. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. That. Copy, copy. So speaking of out of the country, like, do you get like interactions with like love support from like out of the country, like on social media mm-hmm. or YouTube or whatnot? I feel like as of late, yeah, like I had this one guy, he was rapping over my beat. He was like from Korea. He was rapping wow. in Korean. Um, and so lately, yeah, like, my followers have been kind of going up and, um, you know, we've been seeing more love from like England, um, Toronto, um, you know, other places, which is pretty dope to see. That's so, so far, you know, yeah. one, one step at a time. Yeah, one but, but time. one step, but like eventually, eventually take over the world, country yeah, by country, city by city. Of course, of course. Yeah, so I'm not sure you've even seen that video of DMX performing in front of like mm-hmm. a million people. That shit be insane. So, can you see yourself DJing at like one of those crazy ass festivals? What EDM or like whatever it is, like yeah, that's one. That's one of my goals. That's always been one of my goals. So like, ever since I was young, because I started DJing at 11 years old, right? Um, and I was doing like 13. I was DJing for the New York Knicks, Intel, um, Jay Z's 4040 Club, mm-hmm. and I was really young. Um, and I wanted to be in like positions like Calvin Harris, mm-hmm. Skrillex, like those were like kind of my idols at the time, and. Um, my, my pops, who's also a producer, was like, yo, okay. if you want to get to where they at, you got to start producing your own shit, you know? Because um, they're not, they not just playing other people's shit. Yeah, they're like, playing, people are going to see them to, see, to hear their music, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I started producing at 14, and that's always been the goal, you know? Um, you got producers like Metro Boomin, mm-hmm. Mustard, um, a lot of hip-hop producers are playing their own shows now. Yeah, so yeah. that's... That's always the goal, for sure. And like playing their own music from like even the music that they made years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I seen that video you made, like kind of showing your progress from like 2014 to like today. Yeah. Like actually motivating people to, you know, be critiques of their own craft and you know keep progressing. So like, what made you want to produce music? I would say, and what 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 would you tell yourself in 2014, Mm. like about about like your your experience now and like I guess advice. Um, I would say don't get discouraged, just keep, keep learning. Um, I feel like a lot of people rush and they're trying to figure out so fast, like, you young, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you follow this guy Gary Vee, but he always like, fucking, like, he always says this, like, yo, you are 23, even if you're 30, you're 40, you're still young, yeah. you know what I mean? So I would just tell myself, like, keep learning, um, and that's, yeah, keep learning and just, Stay patient. Yeah. Because right? um, I was listening to those old beats and I was like, holy shit, like the progression is like, it's real. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm only going to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I would just say keep learning for producers mm-hmm. um, and rappers as well. Yeah. Yeah, just, 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 just learn and progress and just try to, you know, like do better than you did yesterday. Yeah. Like, I, I thought I would tell myself. Exactly. And, and for producers, like, listen to different types of music. You know what I mean? Like, I was growing up, I mean, I'm Puerto Rican, so mm-hmm. I grew up with bachata, yeah. uh, merengue, salsa, like, hip hop, R&B. Um, you know, my dad worked at 106 in Park, wow, and fire. MTV, like, stuff like that. So I was always, like, surrounded by all, all, all types of genres, artists. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that definitely gave me the ear to, like, know what I like, yeah. and know what I want to produce, you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah so, sure. so, so you would say that your dad um, was your direct influence to you want to produce and DJ, or just DJ? What, what would you say in that aspect? Um, definitely produce. Okay. Produce. Um, DJing kind of came naturally. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of in, into it. Um, but I used to DJ on this like touchscreen DJ system. Okay. And uh, yeah, I want to show you but <laughs> um, And that's kind of how I got started. Um, they were trying to like promote the touchscreen DJ system to 106 in Park. They were trying to get it on the show, mm-hmm. and it never ended up working out. Okay. So it was just stuck in my basement, and that's kind of how I how I got started. You know what I mean? So um, I don't know where I'm going with this statement, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, I think you're going off of like how you started. I would say, cause I think you always like playing music, but now after that game, yeah. So system. so the bass influence part, mm-hmm. like. DJing came naturally, producing definitely came 
from him. You know yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, and honestly, I think I think people kind of like take that role like for like like for granted. I would say. I think like about seventy percent of the music that we, that we listen to, like and the quality and like the beats and everything, come from the producers. I think people just give all the artists the credit. Mm. I think we had a uh, Chris Saves, um, a good friend of mine that that made a beat some of like we love like top beats for some of his songs and yeah. And one thing he mentioned was that he felt that the credit like the credit wasn't really as much, not only to him but just all producers. Yeah. Um, so I like, feel like that's changing though. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like a lot of producers are getting love. Like literally, especially in hip hop, like. At least for me, like I'm listening to the beats more than mm-hmm. the actual lyrics sometimes, you know? And I'm going in and trying to find like, oh, what is this shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's changing slowly. Like, And I've even seen artists like put the producers as featured, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which I think is dope, like showing love to the producers because, you know, without the producers, yeah. you know, she's not slapping them. So. Basically, basically. So that's changing for sure, though. Yeah. And honestly, I think like, I feel like even hearing the tag on social media, like, when you like, when you hear a song, you hear a reel or like a snippet, and you hear a tag. Like, I find myself looking at um Cash Cobain. You mm-hmm. know, like it would be like it's a beat from Cash, not from YouTube. Like even shit like that is like is it's like then the song might about to be fire. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that being on social media is big, and you but you're creative as hell on on on, on TikTok and Instagram. And so like, how important do you think it is for creators on any level, any role, to basically hop on social media and like you know show the craft to the world yeah i think it's super important because um you know social media has like opened up so many doors for like so many people Mm -hmm. um like for instance like i've been on social media for a minute but it took me mad long to just get like one video to pop years bro Mm -hmm. and and this whole time i thought i was making like dope shit and looking back i was like "Ah, maybe not you know but um i think it's important because you get opportunities you know, if you work hard enough, like you'll get opportunities and you meet artists. Like, yeah. We would have never linked up if it wasn't for social media. I don't so, I don't so you know, I think artists have to be on TikTok, creating content um, on a daily basis. At that, I think like there's like no sleeping. Like I mean, I'm sure people have like like busy schedules, but I think like one day you miss, like you can miss that one swipe. Somebody swiping on your shit and. That one song that you feel like is popping and you didn't post it today, yeah. you might have just missed the opportunity of somebody being like, oh shit. Yeah, for me personally, like, I can't post every day. Like, mm. that's too much. Yeah. You know I and mean? like, you kind of have to have a balance. But definitely, you gotta be consistent. Yeah. Because um, a lot of people start something and they don't finish it. So you just gotta, like, be consistent. And I think that's what I've done pretty well. Like, mm-hmm. try to every week post a big video. Um, and that's also a way to just, like, promote myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Especially if I'm, I'm not going outside. Like <laughs> a I'm good way to promote myself is just in social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? So definitely, you gotta, you gotta make your videos. For sure. You know? <laughs> so like, what are some opportunities that, like, that like you're like honored and blessed to have, I guess, experience due to you being on social media? Mm. Like as a recent, or just like in general? In, ge- in general. Um, I would just say just uh, meeting artists, um, linking with them. Um, I would say gigs, DJ gigs that I've gotten. Um, yeah, I mean, opportunities come from any, any opportunity is a good opportunity, I would say. Um, I try not to say no too much, you know, like, like that movie Yes Man yeah. with Jim Carrey. It just says yes to everything type shit, so, um, yeah. Yeah, um, so, so like, are there like some opportunities, like, or experiences that you were like, damn, like, maybe I should have said no to Or like, you're just like, fuck it, I'm glad I, I even got it. <laughs> no, so sometimes I'm like, I should have said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But for the most part, I try to like keep an open mind mm-hmm. about certain things. Yeah, for sure. I, and um, I mean, you were on five. You were on Fox Five. So you were on Fox Five. Um, cause yeah, you, I came from out of the blue. Out of the blue. Yeah. So. After I, I made like a how to make a beat mm-hmm. using Yankee Stadium sounds, and um, I posted that. And people were like kind of sharing it, and. Uh, Posted on TikTok and Bleacher Report reached out to me. Damn. And they were like, yo, we want to repost a video. So, actually, sorry, the New York Post mm-hmm. did an article. And then I feel like after that article, Bleacher Report kind of saw the video. And that's how, you know, that kind of happened. Yeah, you see that. And then Fox 5 and shit, but, you know. Yeah, I think I'm going to ask you how it happened, but I think you kind of made it seem like like as simple as possible. But like, it's, I know at that moment, you were just like, damn, like, so like, how, do you, how did you feel? 
going through that, like, like the New York Post hitting you up and then Bleacher Report, was it like fake, like shocking a little bit? Nah, it was cool. It was just, um, you know, it was, it was like, damn, about time, bro. Like, yeah. You know, I, I put so much work into like my craft, so, um, you know, for people to see it, appreciate it, you know, it's a blessing. Yeah. For real. Gotta, gotta like witness the greatness at some point. I think I think all that hard work you put in, you respect your craft so much. You like you know people are gonna like notice it and kind of respect it. I think. Yeah, man, mm-hmm. and it's just a grind. You know what I mean? Like it's not the end goal. It's just another opportunity, and you know more people see my work, and yeah, it just keep moving forward after that. You know. Yeah, and that went like you said that went off. You collect that random sounds um, from like from Yankee Stadium. I think you did the train one time. I think you were on vacation. You were just like on a beach collecting sound and shit at one point. Like, so like, what made you step out, outside someday and say, I'm gonna go to Yankee Stadium and just record mass sounds and just make a beat off of it? Like, like, where did that come from? Yeah, so that, well, um, how I started the How To Make A Beat, mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of just random. I was just chilling at the crib with my, my sister. Um, Cause my sister usually like records on my videos. And, uh, sorry, and, um, one day I was just like, yo, Mia, just record me and I'm going to record sounds around the kitchen mm-hmm. and, you know, we're going to see what's up. So uh, I did the kitchen video and I was like recording pasta sounds, spoons, <laughs> forks, knives, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that video did really well. Like, so I was like, man, maybe I should just keep on it. And keep going with it, yeah. Yeah, so I did fucking MTA sounds. I think that was like one of my most yeah, that's, I, I, I saw that early. I was like, damn, that shit is. Yeah. Who's doing this right now? A lot now? of people go late, you know, everybody takes the mm-hmm. train. Um, Yankee Stam sounds. I just randomly went to a game and I was like, yo, I should probably take an opportunity of this. And uh, yeah, so I just do it for fun. A lot of people like, I got a lot of shit for like the Yankee Stadium one. Wow. But I was, I don't know, I was just like, because you know, it got posted on Bleacher Report. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I was posting my videos, it was only being shown like in New York. But once Bleach Report posted it, it was like around the country. Yeah, so yeah. people didn't really understand. They probably were like, oh, this kid's like. New York shit. Like, yeah, New York shit. So, um, but I really just do it for fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just, um, it's just cool content to put out. So, you know, yeah. I don't take that shit too seriously. But now, I'm sure you got to respect like from New Yorkers because I, I know people that are not from New Yeah, New Yorkers fuck with it. Yeah. A lot of New Yorkers, like, I get a lot of love in, mm-hmm. in like the city with those videos, which is pretty cool. I could imagine. Like I said, I think everybody relates to it. And I think like even like also like you cut the sound, you also make mad different beats, um, and you sample shit as well. So I know like on your recent video, you took the, you took the Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack song, and then like the whole like like reggaeton like mm. into it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. so like what goes behind your process of like of like doing that like collaborating with different genres or even types of music? Right? Um, yeah, like I said before, like kind of listen to like a lot of music, reggaeton, dance hall, hip hop. So I wanna. I don't want to just make one thing, you know what I mean? I think uh, sometimes a lot of producers kind of try to stick in a box, which is cool, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because especially if you have a certain sound, you know, people come to you for that one sound. Yeah, yeah, but me, yeah, I just like music, so I just want to, you know, and it's also another way of making good content, especially like if a song's popular, yeah. you know what I mean? Take the song, flip it. Um, I really like sampling, so. Yeah, and, and, and it's fun to you, so it's not just like I'm sitting here just doing this shit just to make it work. Like you taking two genres that you kind of fuck with, I would say. Like and it's just like yeah. I'm gonna try and make this. The reggae though shit really did pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Too. on TikTok, all the all the TikTok girls. Just <laughs> running, so, yeah. You start hearing all the dances off and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So like you collab with several artists. I know like my bro Dion. Shout out my boy Dion. Facts. Um, I know you you you. Killed that with him. Yeah, yeah I think your, your boy uh, Nico Nico Brims. Nico Brims. Like I said, you know, hopefully we have him on here one day. Um, you you basically like, made the beats for them, and they were freestyle on it. Yeah, exactly. And like, how? Like, like, what, what made you be like? You know what? I'm trying to work with him. And like, yeah, like, like, what, what, what catches your eye about these about these talents? Um, honestly, it was more of like, a, you know, I wanted to create a platform where artists could come and we could both show up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah, like Nico, I I've seen Nico for a minute, and I always wanted to get him on my show because he's nasty with it. And um, I was so I just hit him up, and I just kind of had the right beat, and he fucks with my work too. So yeah, yeah. it was like a, it was dope. And then uh, Dion, I actually had somebody hit me up. He was like, Yo, you should have him on your show. Like you know, a lot of labels are looking at mm-hmm. him, and definitely. And uh, 
I was doing some drill beats too, so I was like, I had, I had this one drill beat that I felt like would be right for him. Yeah, yeah. And he came like, because I hit him up on like a day notice, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he was he came, he did his thing, and it, it was a good video. Yo, he's he, he's hungry. Yeah. I was like, he's hungry. He, I knew we were younger, you know, and you grew up on. Yeah. So basically, so um, I would I was in high school and early college, and you know, I would just look up with him, my boy Austin. Sorry, my, my boy Austin, but I met Dion through my son Austin. And it was just like automatic. He was just so cool. Like, yeah. Um, he think he went live. He went live a few weeks ago. Like, he seen me go live. My boy Andy. Andy was there when I was broke. Like, you know was what I'm saying? Was he doing music like that? Honestly, he was good. He took a long break though. You would ask me. He took a long break mm. from from making music. Um, yeah, he got he had a little buzz too. Like people really fuck with him. So yeah, I'm glad I got him on. And he said drill beats. So like, I, I don't really see him recording too many drill like drill songs or on drill beats. So what made you want to be like? Let me try to put a hand on a drill beat. Uh, I have no idea. You said, fuck, I'm gonna hand it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this might work. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, so um, Dion took a break from music for a while. Um, you know, he was getting to it, how he had to get to it or whatnot. You know, I guess that, you know, maintain or whatnot. So, like, what's something that you think the government could do, or, like a nonprofit or something that could do, like, to like discover and build stuff, several music talents in the city? Um, I'm sure people here want to want to make beats, want to rap, and you know, want to have some kind of studio time, like, what, what, do, you think, what do you think, like, should be provided to the community, like, mm. to kind of help build the opportunity to find these talents? Yeah, for, like, young kids to go and, like, yeah, I feel what you're saying. Um, well, I was part of um, this thing. I wasn't really part, well, I was part of it. Uh, kids Bay, they were, okay. they made, like, in, um, I think it was, like, in the Heights. They have a Kids Bay, and uh, my, my dad was part of, like, process and they, they built a studio for young kids to come and like learn how to produce records mm -hmm. and um so i think more of that would be dope you know what i mean yeah um and just like arts in general would have to be just producing you know um i don't know the process yeah, yeah but take, like it'd be but, cool for them to have that opportunity you would say yeah for sure um but producing specifically like if you're fortunate enough to like have a laptop mm -hmm. a keyboard you could do it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And some headphones, like, you don't need much to yeah. produce, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you got YouTube. YouTube is like a good educational tool. For sure. So, you, you, know. you, you can know how to do heart surgery on fucking YouTube. <laughs> you, if you really want to look it up. You should go to college for that. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, and so, honestly, look, you're you going crazy on social media right now, and I think the, the ability you have, you know, in making reels and, and making clips or whatnot, like, like you like you go next to it. Like honestly, if I, if I was your manager, we we asked for fifteen bands for a fucking song. You want to beat? I might need 10, 15 bands for your man. Yeah, I don't know. I be I be lowball on myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. You know what I mean? Um, but it's funny. My boy, my boy, the other day was like, Yo, "You gotta be charging fucking. We need a hundred, a hundred thousand. Yeah, no, we're not there yet. But <laughs> no, I'm <fucking> shit. <laughs> no, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Timbo money. No, nah, yeah, I think, I think, I think, like, I guess. You know, knowing your worth, I think respecting your craft as well. Yeah. Cause you could you could put in time on anybody, but I think that you knowing your worth, like. And also learning about respect. the money sometimes. Mm -hmm. More about like, like sometimes I'll give away free beats if I really want to work with an artist. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of kind of belief I have. Like, if I really believe in the artist, like, nah, fuck the money. We'll just like do this. Mm -hmm. The money will come. Like, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. So. I say one last question I would say that'd be cool to end it off for our viewers when that would be what's a piece of advice that you received ever that has stuck with you forever and will, and will, and will continue for, to, to live within you? Piece of advice. Um, I would say honestly the the keep learning part is like always sticks with me, with my dad, my mom, um, and just kind of just be humble, be humble, keep learning, yep. um, and just, you know, go a thousand percent, um, and just like, if you don't believe in yourself, then nobody, nobody else will, will, you know, my parents even tell me like, yo, like, even if like, I don't like something you're doing, but if, if you believe in it, then Lock in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be my advice, people. Yeah, man. So again, I want to thank you again for coming on the show, man. Yes, sir, bro. That yes, sir. Down the basic streets, man. Yeah, I think you kind of spread, set some some key jewels. That I think will sit with our viewers and 
again, this happened, this happened out of nowhere. I had you up random deep, and then I said, you know what, he's a, he's a cool creator, and remember, stay humble, y'all. This man is humble as hell. He ain't had to be here today, but and I check your, DM, you, check your DMs. Check your DMs. Facts. Listen, the opportunity might be the same for y'all. <laughs> Don't go Hollywood, man. Stay humble. <laughs> yes, sir. Again, Andy Bunks, Devin the Beezer, and Basic Streets. A little bit in there. Salud. Yes, sir. Cheers. Aw, oh, damn, we did it again, man. And it's talking to appreciation from Embrace the Streets, uh, New York Touch, we want to hand over, you know, uh, a bottle of Bel Air, you know, to just, you know, uh, support and congratulate you on everything that you got going on, Thank you, where you're going in life, man, and what we going in life. Thanks again for coming on the show. Yes, sir, man. Episode Appreciate number, y'all. Episode, episode number six, man. Yes, sir. Jeff and the Beezer, we going up. Embrace the Streets. Salud. Woo-woo.